Uh, everybody wants to talk to athletic directors. Everybody wants to talk to school presidents, you know, et cetera. Uh, we understand what the chain of command is. Obviously, the governors and the mayors and the CDC and everybody else are going to be ones that make the final call. But if you end up with a season with no fans and you end up with, you know, a, a different kind of circumstance than a player would typically go to a school for, uh, nobody is talking to the players about this. It, would it be inconceivable for a player to ask to sit out um, or really just have a, a feeling of where they don't want to play this season? Uh, would it, is there any chance that this could be up to the players? I know that that's a, a weird, long question, and well, I don't really know how to ask it. But it, Well, I, I think it depends on if you're talking about individual players or, or groups of players. You know, the players as a group really never act. You don't hear, you know, that the Alabama football team has voted, you know, not to practice on Wednesdays or that they need, you know, they need something they don't have. You hear individual players sometimes gripe, not usually at Alabama, but maybe at lesser, lesser places. And I think you, you certainly may see individual players decline to play. There may be people, you know, with medical conditions or people whose parents are leaning on them not to take any risks or people who are just, you know, they're bench warmers. They're, they're not, there's not that much upside to them playing one more season of football or even two. And if you tell them that you're going to open up in the summer, you're going to have, you know, summer workouts and you're going to have games and they're going to be well closer than six feet to a lot of large gentlemen between, you know, July or August and uh, Christmas, some of those people are going to bail. And I don't think they're going to be star players at, you know, Ohio State and Michigan. I think they're going to be lesser football players that they're going to bail. But there is no way for the players as a group to speak. That's one of the reasons that, you know, NCCA was formed was to attempt to speak for players. But when our executive director, Mr. Yuma, says something, he, he'll admit to you in a minute. He doesn't take a poll of all the players in the country. There's kind of no way to do it. So the players can't speak as a group. There's no union. There's no nothing. That is such a shame. Chris, do you, uh, did you have any topic on, uh, on that? Any well, statement? My, my, my question was, is do you think if a player chose to sit out this year and they are a scholarship type player, can, can they, can they get another year of eligibility? If they choose to take some type of hardship to, to sit out for, you know, I guess you would consider this a medical reason? I think they would have another year of eligibility. The real question is whether they give them the scholarship the next year. My understanding is, you know, you show up at, you know, any place, you know, big school, small school, show up at Kentucky to play basketball and play one or two or three seasons. And the next year you say, you know, I decided to travel to Europe, you know, enjoy myself. And I'll be back. Maybe I'll be able to speak some Italian. And when you come back, you're eligible as heck. Um, but your scholarship may be long gone. So I think I think those are the, those are the two answers. Scholarship would depend on whether John Calipari really wanted him to play, and the uh, and the eligibility would be completely in the control of the player. Now there are places, you know, like the Ivy League has very tough rules on red shirting and things like that. And it's conceivable you could lose your eligibility at a few more academically inclined or picky places. But I think nine schools out of 10, you'd be eligible. There is another trick to it, um, Gary and Chris, which is that if they've recruited other players, they may be over the, um, they may be over the number of scholarships they can give out. And there's talk that the NCAA is going to give them additional scholarships. In other words, you know, you've got a basketball team that's got 15 players, 15 scholarships, whatever. And, you know, if you let people come back, uh, well, take a spring sport, it's better, baseball. You let people come back next year, now you got really five years of players. And you, pro you have freshmen who showed up who were promised scholarships, you probably have too many players. So in that situation, I think the NCAA is talking about giving them a waiver, letting them have a few extras. But if you took next year off and played the year after, you might be uh, – might be out of luck on that scholarship. That's that's something that was brought up today. Um, Wisconsin announced, and, the, and I don't think they'll be the only Power Five school to do this. Uh, Wisconsin has thirty-five spring sport seniors, and while they have all been granted waivers from the NCAA, and Wisconsin, along with everybody else, has been granted the uh, the ability 
to add those players back to their roster to go over their scholarship limit. Uh, Wisconsin has said, nope, like yeah, your career is done here. Uh, if you want to play elsewhere, you know, you can request a, a transfer through the NCAA and all that, but, uh, but your career at Wisconsin is done. And a lot of that is they don't, uh, they're already facing financial hardships and they don't have the money, or so they say, uh, to pay for those additional scholarships. Uh, and I'm curious yep. how that's going to be across the board. So it, I'm okay. It, you know, it's going like to create to all kinds. Go ahead. I, I'd like to jump in on this before you start answering. You can follow up and answer on this. I get in that situation, I get for all these smaller sports where you don't have a lot of scholarships to go around anyway, um, not being able to pay their scholarships. But just telling them not to come back and not taking them back on the team is something I don't understand. Basically, taking away their year of eligibility. So um, when the NCAA originally said we were going to allow schools the ability to keep these guys another year of eligibility, my, my red flag went up and I said, hmm, that, that's a very funny way of wording it, okay? And, and my question to my friends that were in a group chat with some other guys from Northwestern that talk about this stuff all the time, which is, I don't trust these schools to do the right thing. So while the NCAA said now the school has the right to say they can have another year of eligibility, the school has to grant them that year of eligibility, not the NCAA. And my question is, is can that kid now from Wisconsin go to Arizona if they want to play? Can they go somewhere well, else? And that's, that's just a, you know, plain vanilla transfer. And, you know, the transfer rules are a little bit up in the air. But, yeah, he should be able to go someplace else. I think I think you're entitled to four years of varsity eligibility, plain and simple. Now, there may be a few weird exceptions to that. But um, if you're entitled to four years of eligibility and you use three of them up at Wisconsin, I think you got one left. And, you know, there used to be rules about sitting out. That's not what I'm talking about. They, they seem to be getting phased out. or We're almost disappearing when the coronavirus hit us and kind of interrupted the process. but. He's got a year left. It's really, it's really all the money about the scholarship. I think is what they're talking about. But it ripples all over the place, guys. I was talking to somebody yesterday uh, at Duke who was pointing out to me that that there were schools holding back on making offers of scholarships to high school juniors because they thought there was going to be a pileup of too many players on campus with scholarships in in two years. Uh, forget about this year. They're talking about the year past that. So uh, they're already trying to sort of make room uh, or, you know, keep enough room to keep every high-quality athlete they have on campus, uh, no matter how this coronavirus thing plays out. And that may mean there's some high school juniors who would get a scholarship to play football at Wisconsin or basketball at Kentucky or, you know, baseball at Podunk, who aren't going to get a scholarship offer, at least very quickly, while the coach holds back his scholarships to wait and see how this thing plays out, what the NCAA does, what his, what his college president tells him he's supposed to do. And then, he want, you know, he wants the best ball players on the, you know, on the field. Uh, and he wants flexibility. So he's already kind of – he's already got people he's got to take care of, and he's not taken out anymore. So I, I thought that was interesting that it's rippled down to kids in the 11th grade already. Yeah, it's, it, I 